floats atop that uppermost vertebrae. It floats forward and up. I'm coming up on through to a point between the eyebrows. Hemispheric center, softening the eyes, softening the forehead. Gathered creatively within that Ajna center, the center of direction. And it is from here that we can direct the light through the physical healing, purifying, strengthening. Consciousness itself seated upon the lotus, seated between the eyebrows, upon the lotus, directing the light through the realm of the emotional astral plane, stilling the water, placid, those fluidic realms, coming to rest so that we are capable of more beautifully and fully reflecting higher booty, love wisdom. The consciousness itself between the eyebrows within that chakra, directing the light through the realm of the lower concrete mind, the monkey mind, thought form building, mercurial, holding that mercurial substance so that it is receptive, alert, capable of fresh impression. Consciousness itself between the eyebrows within that brilliance. We look into that light, through that light and beyond to greater above the head thousand petaled lotus from Aranda, the crown center to the very heart within the head itself a portal into the higher realms of mind into the realm of the abstract mind the egoic lotus Maria Christina the group soul and personality of truth is here we begin our work with the act of naming. Maria Cristina, I apologize. Please don't touch your device. There is sound coming from you. Thank you. Within, within, within the egoic lotus, a group centered soul, the soul, the realm of the soul on its own plane. A group conscious entity. And it is here we begin our work with the act of naming Martha Gallagher. Martha Gallagher. Catherine Swenson. Frida Kemp. Darcy Sessions. Bridget Murphy. Arjo Heinsola, Maria Cristina Donadiu, Alexandra Radcliffe.
Anne Marie Fryer. Annette Ebbett. Antoinette Dutrois. Avon Madison, Avon Madison, Barbara Anibali. Carly Nero. Karsten Jensen. Cheryl Benson. Christine Moore, Claire Bainan, Ox Uzu. Diane Rogers, Dot Maver, Elsa Bauman. Rana Eva Smith, Eva Smith, Eva Smith, Francis DeVry Robe, Iris Spelling, Jocelyn Trobe, Karen Hendren, Karen Gritska, Lonnie or Beck Runland,
Mihail, Mihail Koglonsky. Robin Gross. Ron Kendricks. Rose with the grass. Silvana de Preto. And Janet Derwent. And Alexander Yuksha. As a group, a group heart embedded within at the heart center of the new group of world servers. Embedded within humanity, linking, bridging, as we begin our work, linking onto the lower concrete mind, we'll begin our work together. Bridget. Thank you, Maria Cristina. And whoever's next, please unmute yourself. Marta, can you please advise who should unmute? Bridget, are you ready to begin the PowerPoint? Let us begin with many thanks to Bridget. Yes, thank you. I'm now unmuted, Martha. Good afternoon, everyone. On our agenda today, we have a short introduction on, this, on the Sustainable Development Goals and how this meditation came about. This is followed by a presentation on the study guide that has been created and uh, some highlights of the meditation. Then the meditation, followed by a discussion as time allows. Next slide, please. So a group of seven from three countries Canada, Finland, and the U.S. were inspired, as Alex mentioned, following a presentation at the 2019 Seven Ray Conference. The group gathers weekly for meditation and group discussion. Through individual study and research, with particular emphasis on what DK tells us about money and meditation, we contribute within a shared leadership model. 
we've taken an iterative approach for continuous refinement. We found that our ongoing focus brings through intuitive insights. So our purpose is to contribute to the 2019 Festival Week celebration preparations being conducted all over the world, to contribute to group work being done towards right relationship and right sharing, to increase the use of the meditation and to grow awareness of the SDGs, to stimulate the breaking up of concretized energy under the control of the forces of materialism, and to direct its golden flow into the hands of the forces of light, to add momentum to those working to achieve the SDGs and people of goodwill everywhere working for the good of humanity. We are today sharing the meditation and materials for the first time. Thank you all for joining us. Next slide, please. The work of Seed Group 9 is closely aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals. DK, DK tells us in Dinah 1, page 39, and I quote, this ninth group will be composed of financiers and economists. They will work with the energies and forces which express themselves through the interchange of the values of commerce. They will deal with the law of supply and demand and with the great principle of sharing which ever governs divine purpose." End quote. And his word from White Magic, page 412, and again I quote, money, as I have before said, is only crystallized energy or vitality what the Oriental student calls pranic energy. It is a concretization of etheric force. It is therefore vital energy externalized, and this form of energy is under the direction of the financial group. They are the latest group in point of date, and their work, if it should be borne in mind, is most definitely planned by the hierarchy. They are bringing about effects upon the earth which are most far-reaching. Next slide, please. The following description of the Sustainable Development Goals is from the UN website, un.org, and I quote, the Sustainable Development Goals are the blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face, including those related to poverty, inequality, climate, environmental degradation, prosperity, and peace and justice. The goals interconnect, and in order to leave no one behind, it is important that we achieve each goal and target by 2030. That's from UN.org. These goals were adopted by the UN in 2015. They are consistent with hierarchical objectives. They represent a concretization of the principles of right relationship with money, reflecting right relations and right sharing. The adoption of the SDGs represents a significant opportunity for humanity to increase focus on right values. Next slide, please. And yes, there is progress. Systemic changes are taking place and are needed. Clarity as to the most effective action and the effectiveness of actions are developing and increasing as work progresses. Significant capabilities, expertise, and effort are being applied within and outside the SDG framework. Next slide, please. This is a slide from a recent <clears throat> report by the OECD, which found that while climate finance reached 71.2 billion US dollars in 2017, marking an up from 58.6 billion in 2016, it still fell short of the goal to be reached by 2020. However, the OECD Secretary General assures that the goal to reach 100 billion in annual climate finance by 2020 is still, still attainable. But he says, and I quote, we must urgently step up our efforts to provide public climate finance and improve its effectiveness in mobilizing private finance. Next slide, please. The work to achieve each goal depends on and affects other goals. 
the values of right relationships and right sharing increase in line with the progress made towards the goals, and with goal 17 in particular. Right relationships is a critical success factor in achieving the partnerships to deliver on the 16, uh, on the other 16 SDGs. Next slide, please. This is one of the many visuals available on the UN website on the SDGs. We will name each goal during the meditation. Next slide, please, and over to you, Catherine. Thank you. As mentioned earlier, the meditation is an adaptation of the Tibetans' meditation published in 1944 called The Reflective Meditation on Attracting Money for Hierarchical Purposes. In this adaptation, we seek to bring together physical need and physical demand and correct interpretation with right motive, group formation, and selfless purpose. We do this by grounding the meditation into the physical plane expression through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Next slide, please. In the meditation, we are working esoterically with the planetary financial system, unblocking and directing the flow of money. We take our stand as members of the new group of world servers in full alignment with the spiritual hierarchy and Shambhala. We act as world saviors in Pisces and as world servers in Aquarius to clear and cleanse our planetary financial system. Money is defined by DK is precipitated by the third aspect of divinity, a golden substance and a crystallization of potent energy. Next slide, please. Some key aspects of the meditation are Aquarian energy, cosmos, cosmic linkages and relationships, invocations, and thought form building. The transformative power of these energies will be enhanced as the practitioner visualizes the linkages, correspondences, and connections between group consciousness, the centers of the planetary logos, and the great ray forces of the constellations. In this meditation, we are invoking a response from hierarchy and Shambhala to assist us in creating the thought forms and visualizations that strengthen the work of the new group of world servers. The process emphasizes ray seven and the redemption of matter. Next slide, please. As the group worked with the meditation, rhythmically doing it every Sunday morning for the past four months, we experienced more and more esoteric impressions, which we then shared in group reflection each Sunday. These impressions have been collected and a study guide is being developed to share some of these insights, supported by DK's teachings. The intention is to offer an aid for practitioners of the esoteric schools and the ageless wisdom as they work with the potent and transformative energies within this reflective meditation. The next few slides will introduce the study guide and some key aspects useful for the meditation, and then the group will do the meditation together. The study guide is still in draft form, but available in the handout section of this webinar. So here's an overview of the table of contents for the study guide. And I'll just go through some of the main points in a few more slides before we do the meditation. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. The 11th labor of Hercules symbolizes a particularly potent visualization used in the meditation. 
In this labor, Hercules is asked to cleanse the Aegean stables of accumulated filth from the cattle which the king had confined there. The parallel to the constricted energies of our financial systems, which have been sequestered by the most powerful and wealthy, is evident. Furthermore, Hercules accomplishes his task by redirecting the flow of love and life, the two rivers named in the myth. He does not deal directly with the accumulated refuse of the cattle. So in this meditation with visualization, we are directing the two streams of Aquarian energy, the river of life and the river of love, sweeping away the impediments to right sharing. Next slide, please. This redemptive meditation follows the general methodology of white magic to bring the higher principles of economy, right relationship, and the law of dominating good, first into consciousness, then to the concrete mind, and ultimately into matter. The SDGs are a new resource for anchoring the principles of right relationship with money. DK talks about the need for this kind of practical work. From Esoteric Astrology, page 246, he says, quote, It is through the relation of the three aspects of the third divine manifestation, law, affinity, and concretized energy, that money is created. He goes on to explain, quote, that world servers often work from the second, second aspect, where it is the third aspect, equally divine and equally important, which must be invoked and evoked. And finally, he says, still quoting, it is not the bringing together of spirit and matter as occultism understands those terms, but the relating of physical need and physical supply and the bringing together of two tangibles through the power of creative imagination. End quote. Next slide, please. The next slide after this one is a symbol used in the meditation to help visualize the cosmic relationship supporting the redirection of money to spiritual purposes. DK's teachings in esoteric astrology are the source for these relationships. The symbol will look two-dimensional, but in reality this is merely a simplified representation of complex and dynamic relationships between the new group of world servers, planetary centers, the zodiac, and Venus. Next slide, please. In the meditation, the six apex points of the two interpenetrating triangles can be visualized in multiple relationships with each other. One triangle represents the three centers of the planetary logos, Shambhala, humanity, and hierarchy. The other triangle links the three zodiac constellations that DK emphasizes in relationship to the redemption of money for spiritual purposes, that being Libra, Taurus, and Capricorn. Venus, represented in the center of the two triangles, is the ruler at different levels in all three constellations and is, quote, the source of intelligent mind acting either through desire in the early stages or love in the later stages. It's from Esoteric Astrology, page 244. On the same page, we find that the whole process under consideration for spiritualizing the concretized energy of money has to do with the activity of the three rulers of Libra, Venus, Uranus, and Saturn. And we note that Uranus is now in Taurus, the sign of the new group of world servers and a ruler of Aquarius. And Saturn is the planet ruling disciples. Next slide, please. Venus is the source of intelligent mind, and we use this image courtesy from NASA. 
From Esoteric Astrology, page 244 and 245, we learn that Venus in Taurus is the mind expressing itself through intelligent desire. And Venus in Libra is a point of balance attained between material personal desire and intelligent spiritual love. Two qualities of cosmic desire are brought forward in consciousness in Libra and balance one against the other. And Venus in Capricorn is spiritual love expressing itself perfectly when work is accomplished in Taurus and Libra. Next slide, please. The meditation concludes with the group saying together all stanzas of the great invocations from 1935, 1940, and 1945. To quote DK from Externalization of the Hierarchy, page 250, quote, I would ask you to use this new invocation with faith, for it blends into a magnetic unity the forces of the divine will to good, the love which underlies the efforts of the hierarchy, and the intelligent activity of humanity, thus creating a reservoir of power into which the energy of the three divine centers can pour and upon which the forces of light can draw. The saying of this invocation is not a substitute for the physical plane effort on your part. It is complementary to that. And the more you are serving upon the physical plane, the more effective will be your use of the new invocation. Next slide, please. These are some of the key forces being invoked when all stanzas of the great invocations are sounded. In stanza one, the forces of light and the spirit of peace. In stanza two, the lords of liberation, the rider on the white horse, the saving force, and a great defending wall. DK gives detailed explanations about using the great invocations in externalization of the hierarchy. And here is one quote. I quote, I would remind you here that the evocation of this divine contact will be in itself dangerous, disrupting, and destroying. The results are unpredictable for the human being, for men are as yet unaccustomed to respond to lives and influences of so high and divine a nature. There is nevertheless a possibility that it might now be more safely permitted if enough people can stand together spiritually and selfishly and so offer themselves as channels for these new and unknown spiritual forces. End quote. Externalization of hierarchy, pages 261 to 263. Next slide, please. DK prepares us for safeguarding the incoming energies with this quotation. Quote, you ask if there is aught that you can do. There is above everything else, the handling of the energy which is now streaming forth. The energy of love in its dynamic or electric form. It is the will aspect of love, which the Christ will of necessity use this time when he comes. When he earlier came, he employed the teaching aspect of the second ray and not the will aspect. Let your fellow workers catch from you the radiance of love. That, my brother, will release the financial supply so sorely needed. It will be the harmlessness which you and your fellow servers can demonstrate, which will prove the needed agent." End quote. Dina two page 598-599. Next slide, please. In the, next slide, please. In the original meditation, oh, now back one, I'm sorry. <laughs> In the original meditation, DK reminds us to consider personal responsibility and action. 
He instructs us about the secret of creative meditation in Dina 2, pages 222 and 224. The effect of human meditation at this time is to change conditions, to invoke the higher spiritual potencies, to work with concentration, both vertically and horizontally, within the world of men and within the kingdom of God. And I'll just go to the next slide in the interest of time. Thank you. In conclusion, the esoteric astrological influence of this meditation becomes the group's ability in meditation to carry divine potencies through into actions based on the right motive with selfless purpose. And in so doing, we support the bringing together of physical need, money for the SDGs, and physical supply, money currently directed by involutionary forces. We're redirecting the flow of that golden substance towards the work to achieve the SDGs. Next slide, please. I'm now just going to explain the sequence of the meditation. We encourage everyone to share in the visualizations and mantras with us as the group will now lead the meditation. All seven members of the group rotate in reading the sections of the meditation as we've been doing every Sunday. The meditation text will be shown as a shared screen as the group members lead it, although you can certainly just meditate with your eyes closed if you want. There are four active visualizations in the meditation. The 11th labor of Hercules with the river of life and the river of love. The six pointed star in Venus. The golden stream for the transformation of money and the SGD symbol. Similar to DK's meditation, there are five invocations in this meditation, which we will ask you to say aloud with us with focused intent. And then we conclude as a saying as a group, sounding as a group, the great invocations, all the stances provided by DK in 1935, 1940, and 1945. Next slide, and over to you, Frida. Thank you. Just some clarification that those of you who are speaking aloud do not need to unmute yourself. We mm -hmm. will join subjectively in that one sound of the speaker. Thank you. Should we begin the meditation now? Rita, please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I just need to uh, share my screen. Yes. Go ahead, Christina. So, recollecting ourselves. Christina, please don't touch the device. Okay. I'm just having to uh, balance on the sitting bones so that I can quickly gather myself and coming up on through, gathering ourselves through the Ajna Center, directing ourselves one more time into the higher realms of mind through on to the egoic lotus the realm of the soul on its own plane a group conscious entity we link again or reinforce through the dynamic magnetic force of each soul a group Aura, engendering a group aura. 
through the heart of the soul. And joining with the group soul of all those meditating in support of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Embedded within the new group of world servers, the Ajna Center of Humanity. We stand at the very heart, linking with hierarchy Christ at the heart, oriented towards Shambhala, Sanat Kumara at the heart. And so we take our stand. Pridgey. Clearing and cleansing our planetary financial system. We take our stand as members of the new group of world servers in full alignment with the spiritual hierarchy and Shambhala. We act as world saviors in Pisces and as world servers in Aquarius to clear and cleanse our planetary financial system. With Hercules, the world disciple, we stand and direct the flow of the two streams of Aquarian energy, the river of life and the river of love into the blocked and crystallized energy in our financial system. We pause and visualize these blended streams pouring through all business and financial entities and sweeping away all impediments and blockages to right sharing. The construction of our financial system invoking the saving force. Using the creative imagination, bring the three planetary centers, Shambhala, Hierarchy, and Humanity, and the three zodiacal signs related to money, Taurus, Libra, and Capricorn, together in right relation and in alignment with the energy of Venus, the common ruler in each of the signs. Venus unites all three aspects as a focus of intelligent mind. Use the symbol below as an aid to the dynamic relationships between aspects of the triangles within each other and between each other. Shambhala Capricorn, Taurus Hierarchy, and Libra Humanity. With Venus as the overarching influence. And now we invoke the saving force, the blended energy of the three zodiacal constellations and planetary centers by saying aloud and with focused intent. Come forth, O oh mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread throughout our financial and economic systems. Now take a moment to ponder on the reconstituted, reconstructed, and reformed financial system where goodwill, right human relations, 
higher values, and right use of money are employed. See the hands of the workers in the political and financial seed groups, fortified and strengthened. Transformation of money. Ponder on the redemption of humanity through the right use of money. Visualize the money in the world as a great stream of flowing golden substance, passing out of the control of the forces of materialism into the control of the forces of light. See this stream of golden substance flowing into the work of realizing the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Then say the following invocative prayer with focused mental concentration and from a heartfelt desire to meet spiritual demands. O thou in whom we live and move and have our being, the power that can make all things new, turn to spiritual purposes the money in the world. Touch the hearts of men and women everywhere so that they may give to the work of the hierarchy that which is hitherto been given to material satisfaction. The new group of world servers needs money in large quantities. I ask that the needed vast sums be made available. May this potent energy of thine be in the hands of the forces of light. Redirection of the planetary money supply. Visualize the work to be done by the United Nations, the governments of the world, businesses and NGOs to fulfill the SDGs. Include the work done by any groups seeking to implement the plan. Then through the creative imagination and by an act of the will, see untold and unlimited sums of money pouring into the hands of those who seek to implement the sustainable development goals and the plan. Say aloud with conviction and emphasis, he for whom the whole world waits has said, that whatsoever shall be asked in his name and with faith in the response, will see it accomplished. Remember at the same time that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Then say, I ask for the needed money for the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Number one, no poverty. Two, zero hunger. Three, good health and well-being. Four, quality education. Five, gender equality. Six, clean water and sanitation. Seven, affordable and clean energy. Eight, 
decent work and economic growth. Nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. 10, reduced inequalities. 11, sustainable cities and communities. 12, responsible consumption and production. 13, climate action. 14, life below water. 15, life on land. 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. 17, partnerships for the goals. I ask and can demand it because from the center, which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Personal responsibility. Select one or more of the 17 goals each month that speak to you and each week take a partial step towards their realization. There are some specific web links below for suggestions. Close with a careful consideration of your own responsibility to the plan and to the SDG goals. And each week, plan your financial activity in cooperation with the hierarchy. Consider making a monthly donation to a group or groups that claim your loyalty. Ground your understanding in practical action, knowing that as one gives, one receives. We are the ones we have been waiting for to build economies based in right relationships. Sound the great invocations aloud with focused intent. Let the forces of light bring illumination to humanity. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men and women of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Let the Lords of Liberation issue forth. Let them bring succor to the sons of men. Let the rider from the secret place come forth and coming Save. Come forth, O mighty one. Let the souls of men awaken to the light. And may we stand with masked intent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. The love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, 
and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human will. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll just ask if Alex could put up um, the last uh, two slides of the presentation again. Thank you. Uh, so this is the time to hear from you. Uh, I'd like to hear your impressions. Uh, we're also open to questions on the presentation or on the meditation itself. And uh, any ideas that you have, please uh, share. Um, you will see that you can raise your hand. Um, so with uh, Alex's help, we'll unmute you. Um, if you'd like to raise your hand and ask a question, that would be great. And if you don't want to do that, you can also write your question uh, in the chat box, and we will keep an eye out for those questions as well. Can you help me? Do you see any uh, raised hands there? So far, um, not, but I think maybe we could have a, just a moment of silence to allow the energy to come through because it was quite powerful meditation. So if you don't mind, I suggest let's have just a minute of silence.
Thank you. Um, normally at our webinars it takes some time before the questions might start coming in. Oh, we so do I, have one from Diane, Diane Rogers here. So. Diane wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me find here to unmute. Oh, I, see, I see, yes. Hi, how are you? Today, I thank everyone for um, presenting this uh, meditation. Um, the SDGs are definitely what in our hearts we would want for humanity. And so um, participation in this is, is so greatly needed. So, but I had a question about the SDGs and especially um, number 10. It seems like all of them are presented in a um, definitive tone mm -hmm. um, as to this uh, this initiative becoming the reality. Mm -hmm. And number ten states um, reduced inequality. Mm -hmm. So it seems to stand out a bit. None of them I know um, are going to happen immediately. It's going to take time, all of our efforts and work to bring this about, um, uh, aligned with the hierarchy, you know, with mm -hmm. the force and power needed. So I just wanted uh, to understand why that one was stated in, in that way, reduced. Yeah, good observation. Uh, you, you'd expect to say no inequalities, right? Just exactly. like we have no poverty and zero hunger. Uh, I'm going to turn that over to Martha Gallagher to answer. Martha? Hi, Diane. Thank you Hi. so much for, uh, for bringing that up. Goal 10 was listed as the least quantitative of all the 17 goals. And it actually takes on a different flavor, um, which it's interesting. It does tie, connect very uh, intrinsically to the uh, idea of financing. But this was a goal that the developing countries wanted to put forth uh, toward the developed countries. And so it isn't it, it isn't about the pers on the personal level as much as we would like. But there's an awareness of profound, uh, the uh, uneven playing field, particularly when it does come to money. And so there was so much disagreement on getting this particular goal that it's in its most simplified form. But when you look at the targets of the goal of the goal 10, it helps to clarify exact what a little bit better what the developing countries were after when they uh, first when they got this one in um one that comes to mind is a target on remittances which is for some the it, it's the system whereby a lot of the migrants come get jobs in another country and they send their uh, their earnings back to their families and this takes place all over the world and they uh, those from uh, china even come to uh, singapore for example can earn much higher salaries and it actually benefits the countries so in some of the smaller countries the poorer countries Chad and some of the Caribbean countries, as much as 30 to 40 percent of the governmental income is actually based on these remittances. And there is some pressure, of, I'm sorry to say the United States is seeking to raise um, the taxes on remittances, which would reduce the amounts that would flow into the other countries. So this is a, this is a, goal that is actually one of my favorites because it pertains to all the systemic imbalances that exist in the world. Now, as far as measurement goes, 
you're correct. It's also the one that's going to be the, the most difficult to measure, except in terms of the uh, increase in income, the increase of uh, distribution of monies that are raised in order to implement the goals. Um, so I hope that helps answer. Please ask me more if there's more you'd like to know. Thank you, Martha. Um, and Alec, I think you, I cut you off. You were going to ask a, a question. I wanted to um, ask about the, if you know the overall situation with the financing of the sustainable development goals. Uh, Bridget mentioned a little bit in the presentation about the targets to reach, uh, but maybe you can just share more about that. Uh, sure, I'm going to give that question to Martha again. Thank you. So far, um, the the last um, the, the last two big meetings that took place in regard to finance for development occurred in the summertime, one called the High Level Political Forum. And in September, it was a summit on finance for development. In both of those forums, they're measuring their successes. So the, um, at the last summit, it was announced that the governments actually, the collective governments have succeeded in raising $20 trillion. However, the greatest amount of it has gone to the developed countries. It came from the developed countries and it is not yet being dispersed to the help of the other countries. Um, one of the um, blessings in within this group is having our own Ario Hansola because he comes from a country that is third in its success in both raising funds and distributing proportionately to those countries. Um, so that the, the issue again is the problem of distribution. The, the uh, other part is that we're watching daily uh, the issues of climate change take place and that there's uh, an estimate that to deal with the climate change issues that we have now, not the ones coming up in the future, we need $13.5 trillion. So while in general, there's 2.5 trillion needed for um, the implementation of the goals as stated, as we know the conditions are unfolding as we speak. So um, there are different levels of sophistication in terms of how to get this funding and uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres brought together philanthropists um, over the summer and the latter part of the summer to help um, increase the amount of funding. And there's increased pressure to deal with the illicit funds that are um, circulating and, and would be a big contribution. As we know, the unspoken thing that would solve a great deal of the problems is if we shifted our attention away from exporting weapons and um, developing, uh, commercializing our military industrial complex. Um, that's a separate item than uh, being uh, opposed to the military itself. Hey, thanks, Martha. That's great. Um, so I don't see any other hands up, but I thought I'd just uh, turn to Arjun since you brought his name up. Um, uh, and you forgot to mention the country was from, which was Finland. So we'll, we'll add that in. Um, Arjo, you uh, mentioned in the meditation this idea of personal responsibility. Um, could you maybe expand on that a little bit or just talk a bit about uh, maybe some examples of what you mean by personal responsibility? Okay, yes, uh, th because there are also those nowadays, those possibilities uh, for becoming the monthly donate, donator of, of, uh, of uh, 
any any organizations ngos and uh, associations which are working for for those uh, goals which we also mentioned in in this meditation then uh, for example i am the monthly donator of the of the of the greenpeace and unicef and uh, uh, save children save the children and the uh, youngster work in finland and then also of course I, I i give then once a year some big amount to the moria federation and so on and and uh, that's a one way you you can you can do as as you, as a, as a individual person and then for the for the goals then in in the physical plane i i i see that if we could distribute this golden money energy equally then most of these problems on on this physical plane would be solved that's why i also feel this very important work to to co to concern, go and to to focus i think that's that's enough thank you <laughs> <laughs> thanks Sergio. that's a great answer thank you i can add something to that point about personal responsibility and it's more in relation to the actual esoteric work that we are capable of doing. I think the material that you presented today, it's, it's, it's a unique work. And I'm really grateful to your group uh, uh, for this effort. This, the impression that I was getting as I uh, was listening first to you and then as we were meditating, that considering that Uranus went to Taurus uh, earlier this year, and Taurus is a sign of finances besides other things. And Uranus is a big transformer. Uh, he or she is a great revolutioner. And if we can see that the work like this, this meditation, it's it's act of taking the group responsibility for directing those two rivers of life. And it's not something imaginative. It's actually a focused group will that can forward this energy. And it really can happen, considering that astrological opportunity given by this uh, in this time, and not on the Uranus, there are many other things. We really can do this. Do we dare to do this? That's very good, thank you. Um, I thought we would then, uh, just because you've uh, brought this up, um, Alex, uh, turn to uh, our astrological es expert here in the group, uh, Darcy Sessions. Um, Darcy brought up this, this theme of, of working with um, Venus quite extensively. And uh, I thought maybe you could comment both on uh, Alex's um, astrological notations as well as uh, working with Venus as part of this meditation. Go ahead, Darcy. And then I also see a hand from Iris Spellings. Okay, we'll get to Iris in a minute. When we look to our uh, elder sister, Venus, who has a deep, intimate relationship with her little sister, the planet Earth, um, one of the unique things to observe is that Venus 
um, her rotation as she overshadows us um, and the principle of mind that she has brought us, she rotates in the opposite direction of the planet Earth. Um, when we look at the constellation and in uh, the planetary rulers in the great will and the spiritual enfoldment in the online books at Lucis Trust, you will see tabulations of where they bring in the um, essence of the energies of the world savior, the world server, the initiate, the cosmic uh, individual Christ, and the triumphant disciple. When Libra um, works with Venus, she is working, Venus is working actually in the orthodox level with the, with the, the, the masses and the disciple in, is working with Uranus and in the hierarchies is working with Saturn. Uh, it, it's a wonderful blend of three um, levels of um, consciousness that are helping to lift up um, uh, uh, humanity and consciousness that is being um, facilitated by these great beings in the heavens. And as Venus works in Taurus, um, on, on the orthodox level, she again is working um, on, on the, the mass consciousness while the disciple is working with Vulcan. And the hierarchy is also working with Vulcan. And blended with this, when Venus moves into Capricorn, then actually um, Saturn is working with humanity. And the disciple is also working with Saturn, while the hierarchy is working with Venus. So this wonder sh wonderful shift and blending of relationships um, with our big sister is actually um, helping um, the, the world server in Capricorn uh, through Earth and Saturn to relate the race three, the one-pointed disciple becomes the initiate. And, and in, world, in the world saviors uh, area, um, we're actually working with um, that relationship of Leo Aquarius in a relationship with the sun and Jupiter, okay, with Ray Chu to help develop the individual consciousness into a world consciousness of humanity. So uh, uh, humanity learns to become a world server while in Taurus, and its relationship with Pisces through Vulcan and Pluto, we, that is where we have the first ray that's helping to transmute the desire into sacrifice of the individual and, and the will into a divine will. And, and these relationships um, are all beautifully uh, interacting and, and dancing and blending together to eventually call forth um, that uh, triumphant disciple um, who who is Scorpio, the the uh, humanity in Hercules that we're working with to help bring forth that um, awareness of the the intelligent mind, the past that is already present, but to, to help develop it. And Venus is that overarching, overshadowing aspect that assists in these three levels to help raise the consciousness of humanity from personal desire to a higher divine desire of the collective, um, the inclusive consciousness of the disciple. Great. Thank you, Darcy. That's lovely. Okay. I think we've got time for one more comment or question. Um, so let's hear from Iris. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for this significant and very potent, uh, potent meditation, but significant webinar. I, it, it's very, I don't know how to express it. It feels like the financial uh, roadblock is starting to loosen a little bit. But uh, of course, we know we have much more uh, 
much further to go. What I wanted to share, and I don't know, maybe some of you know more about this, but I just received an, an email yesterday from the UNA, United Nations Association of the US. And it says that the UN is facing the worst financial crisis in a decade, and that it's due to run out of funds this month. And that the UN, the Secretary General has announced this and he's put out a call to the member states, the urgency of this because the UN's exhausted all of its remaining financial resources, including the reserve funds. So once that runs out, then it's just a matter of weeks and the Secretary General will be forced to pull from the UN peacekeeping budget. Of course, that's the one to go first. But um, so it's something that we might also keep in our meditation right now. And of course, of course, the bottom line is that the great nations pay their dues, like the US owes the UN in the regular budget 1.05 billion. And so when a nation like ours neglects to fulfill this obligation, then we also forfeit our seat at the table. So anyway, thank you again and um, very grateful. Thank you, Laris. Um, Martha, did you want to make a quick comment about that? Actually, I was thinking, thank you, Iris, for the fact. Um, I was thinking that particularly at this time, we could use the meditation to specifically concentrate on those funds. Um, the SDGs are actually also serving to reform the UN. And so this is a time that there's a topic for another discussion, but when we are thinking about these things and, and intensifying our own efforts to um, change these conditions, um, I would also say that the United Nations has never been more efficient in its use of money. And so uh, that this should be the result of the efforts that it's made in the last 10 years to um, to account for every penny they spend. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to watch. For those of us who are at the UN, uh, we're finding it very hard to get to our um, officials at the UN. There seems to be a rather closed system right now. So, um, we will do what we can to uh, make known our displeasure, but it seems like the best way we can do that is through the State Department. So those of you who want to write to representatives about this 1.05 billion shortfall, uh, it would be a very, very practical action to take in reference to what we're trying to achieve. Thank you again, Iris. Mm, thank you, Martha. It's true, the UN is more efficient than ever. We experience that and civil society groups are pitching in for various things that in the past the UN covered. So it's nice to see that flow of money um, happening there at the UN. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Iris. That was lovely. So um, we're going to draw our, our um, webinar to a close in a few minutes. I'm going to point out a couple of things. Uh, we have put in the attachments um, both the uh, copy of the meditation, a copy of the PowerPoint that we used today, a copy of the study guide, and a compilation on money that uh, comes from Lusa's Trust. So uh, if you see the little uh, uh, icon that says handouts, uh, if you click on those handouts, you can download any one of those uh, four um, pieces. Uh, secondly, I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that this is going to be an ongoing meditation. We are continuing to, to uh, meet every Sunday at 1130. 
And we're now going to extend the invitation to all of you to please come and join us. Uh, if you do want to be included, um, you can simply send your email to Martha Gallagher. And uh, Martha, if you could perhaps just uh, give us your email in the chat box, that would be very helpful. Um, it's already in the chat box, so oh, I just put it there, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I see that it's there, and for those who uh, would like to, it's just my name, M-A-R-T-H-A-G-A-L-L-A-H-U-E at gmail.com, and we'll put you on the list. Uh, we do it by Zoom. And our next meditation will be uh, on the 20th. So again, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll turn it over to Alex to tell us about any upcoming um, webinars and meditations and say thank you uh, with all our heart to Alex and the 2025 initiative for uh, hosting this webinar today. Thank you. Thank you, Frida, and thanks to the group. Um, it's truly a unique experiment, a unique initiative, and I, before closing today's webinar, I want to share with you this um, quote that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, I hope that this example of this initiative will inspire other groups and other initiatives to come with own focused topics to work together across distance and especially now as we approach the festival week the also known as the festival week of group impact so if you are inspired if you're drawn through inner resonance to any cause find others other groups other individuals and start working together. That's during the festival week. You could work with others, bringing your focus in meditation to whatever cause inspires you. As in this quote from Dinah One, who says that ashram is a focal point of receptivity. It embraces the effort to establish mutual contact through an united recognition of the vision. An ashram is a state of mind of a spiritual group. It's a point of a united thought. It's a center for clarification of the vision and not of physical plain methods of work. I truly believe that ashrams will manifest through the efforts like this, through your and our efforts working together, through united meditative effort. Thank you again, beautiful work. And I want to invite you to join our coming webinars. We are uh, today in the second day of the five days period of the full moon. The summit of the full moon is tomorrow, and let's be united as one world group, standing together in the meditative field together with the hierarchy, Shambhala and humanity. And the day, day after tomorrow, we invite you to join our regular full moon webinar. We are now under the energies of the Cardinal Cross and uh, 2025 initiative in this year uh, in the Cardinal Science, we bring groups focused to the vision, the vision of the plan. And this time, as we are on the energy of Libra, Michael Lindfeld will share and guide us through the focused intention on realization of the choices we make. And so please join us on October 14th for Michael's presentation, Choosing to Leave the New Story. And the last day of the five days period of full moon, please join our um, 
second webinar in a new series on manifestation of the new Aquarian civilization. That's another project that brings us together and focuses us together in preparation to the festival week. And this time, um, the Sundial House group will share their vision and their work they do to manifest the new civilization. And just to remind you, this project brings the groups from three countries together that DK outlined as the most important triangle for the modern and the common civilization, US, UK, and Russia. So this is the second webinar in the series and the group from Great Britain comes forward. And we continue working with the sustainable development goals. Every month we invite you to bring uh, your meditative focus to one of the goals. In this cycle of uh, Libra Scorpio, we're focusing on the goal 11th, sustainable cities and communities. And on October 29th, we will have a, our regular new moon webinar. Uh, and our focalizing triangle this time will be Maria Cristina Donadieu, Marta Galicu, and James Mills. So please join us this ongoing day limitation and the webinar on the 29th of October. Thank you again. And we continue our journey together, preparing the way to the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ. Namaste. Thank you, Alex.